Hello! In this video we're going to find out how to build a Rhapsody instrument in Highs. Rhapsody is an open source player plugin I built for my own Highs instrument projects. And thanks to some work by Christoph, it's now easy for you to also create Rhapsody compatible instruments. And I call it a player plugin, and that's the language that's kind of familiar to uh, sample library users. But from our point of view as developers, we shouldn't think of it as a player plugin like Contact is. Uh, we should think of it more as a launcher. So it's able to launch most highs based instrument projects. And if you think of it that way, it, it might just be a bit easier to understand when we get into creating an instrument because we're not really going to be working within the Rhapsody player. We're going to be working in highs to create an instrument that Rhapsody can then launch. And that also gives you a lot more freedom because it means you're not restricted to what I put into the player. You can build pretty much whatever you want and Rhapsody will be able to run that. But it does mean that the user can just um, treat Rhapsody like a player. They'll launch your library from there and you don't have to compile your project for different platforms because Rhapsody's already been compiled and uh, notarized and code signed and all that for Windows, Mac and Linux. So you can just focus on building your instruments. So this isn't going to be a high development tutorial. I have lots of those already on YouTube. So go check those out if you're not familiar with highs or you want to uh, learn more about developing projects in highs. I'm just going to focus on getting you up and running with building a Rhapsody project. And it's really easy. As I say, Christoph's made some changes that make it super easy. So this is highs and we're just going to go to file and create a new project. And I'm going to click browse and go to my desktop and add a new folder. I'm going to call this my Rhapsody project. And then I'll hit OK. And now we have the choice to create an empty project, import a project, or use the Rhapsody template. So you can just use an empty project and start from scratch. Uh, but most of the time, or at least when you're first starting out, you're probably going to want to use the Rhapsody template. And this just gives us some boilerplate code. And there we go. So Heise has downloaded the template project and extracted it. So if we go to our desktop now, so this is my desktop on the left here. There's the project folder and Heise has now populated it with the template project files. So there isn't much in here. There's some scripts which we're going to take a look at. Um, this info.hxi we don't need, we can delete that. And that's pretty much it. Now I've got some samples over here on the right from another project. I'm just going to drag a few of those across just so we've got something to work with. So I'm just going to drag those into our project samples folder. And then I'll close this folder up. There we go. So now we're just looking at the Rhapsody project folder that we've made. Okay, so let's take a look at this. So I'll just minimize the interface. So this is the main interface script. And these are the scripts that have been um, downloaded as part of the template and included. There's some extra lines there. We can just get rid of those. So these are just a bunch of scripts that have been included. And if you want to check those out, you can go through them and have a look. So there's a UI script for constructing UI things. Look and feel with a bunch of look and feel functions. Um, paths, which has icons and things like that, all um, vectors. Expansions, which deals with expansions. So this is things like unloading the currently loaded expansion. In fact, that's the main purpose of this. Uh, I did have an installer thing, but I've removed that. Uh, the header, that's for the header on the UI, the top bar. The footer, that's for the footer, the part that has, let's pull up the UI. So this is the footer section here. And I'm just going to zoom this out a bit so we can see it. There we go. So the footer is this section with um, the volume control, the pan and this status bar. Presets deals with the preset browser. User settings deals with the settings window. And the spinner this is like a loading spinner. When samples are loading, this will pop up and just display a little animation. So these are all the scripts you get with this uh, boilerplate template. And you can modify these if you want, but I'd encourage you not to modify these because if I make updates 
uh, they will overwrite your changes if you were to pull in my updates. So if you want to make any changes, I recommend just adding additional scripts and putting your code in there. Okay, so over in the module tree, we've got the interface script, which we're looking at. We have a master gain control. This is just a simple gain effect. And that's linked to, let me pull this up. So we've got the volume control on the UI controls the gain. So we can see that here. And the pan controls the balance. So that's how these controls are hooked up. We've just got some structural things. So global modulation container, nothing in there. And a container where you should put the rest of your um, modules for your project. And we've got a sine wave generator here. So we get some sound out. But we'll use um, a sampler. So we'll get rid of this sine wave generator. And we'll just put a sampler in here. So let's just open the UI designer and let's have a look at that. Okay, so this is the interface that comes with the template and it looks like all of my instruments because this is the template that I use. Obviously you can change this however you want. Uh, if you want to sort of keep some consistency with my instrument so that users are familiar with the UI and so that you don't have to do too much extra work, uh, you can just use this as is. You might want to change the LibreWave thing and you can put the majority of your UI components in this body panel. So the header panel is this part, the body panel is in the middle, status bar is down here, and the footer with the keyboard is down there. So most of your stuff's going to go in the body. So we'll just add a slider in there. I don't know why it's massive, but that's fine. Let's hit compile on that. There we go. So if you are going with this template, you probably want to change the name from Rhapsody. So this is just a button, so you can just change the text to whatever you like. So my instrument, and we'll just make it a bit larger. So there we go, so that's a button. This button doesn't have a control callback, so if you want to add a control callback to it, you can do. So if you choose to go with this template, you're going to have this Rhapsody button here, which will unload the instrument once it's loaded inside Rhapsody and just uh, take the user back to the Rhapsody home screen. So if I click that, it'll pop up and ask if we want to unload the instrument. Obviously, we're not in Rhapsody at the moment, so we'll click no here. Now, if you don't use this template project, you still need to have this button. It doesn't have to look like this, but it must have this functionality. Otherwise, the user will be trapped in your instrument and won't be able to get back to Rhapsody. So this button is really important. So if you're going to roll your own UI or your own code, just make sure you have a button that does this job and the function it's got to call is this one here. Uh, where is it? Not that one. Uh, here it is. This one. Expansion handler dot set current expansion and you just put empty quotation marks and that will unload the expansion. So yeah, I probably should have said the instruments that we're using are actually a type of highs expansion. So the expansion handler is how we manage the loading and unloading of instruments. So with the boilerplate code, you get all of this UI, you get a settings page that's fully functional and has already been styled. Obviously, you've got the colors, you've got these checkboxes here and whatnot. Oh, and you get this lazy load feature as well. So you're getting a lot of stuff with the boilerplate code. You're getting a preset browser. And again, it's been styled. And you're also getting these uh, load the previous and load next preset buttons and the save button here on the front end. So you get quite a lot of stuff with the boilerplate code. So that's pretty much it. That's what you get with the template. And I'm just going to save the XML of this project. So we'll call it my project.xml. And now let's load some samples in. So here's our sampler. And this is our project folder. And I'm just going to drag the samples that we copied earlier from our samples folder. And we'll just drop those in. It doesn't really matter. I'm just going to save a sample map. My sample map. Okay, so we've got everything loaded. Save the project once again. And now we're ready to export this as a Rhapsody instrument. Oh, and one other thing I should have mentioned is in the project folder, as part of the template, we get an icon. And this is what shows up in Rhapsody. So if I open Rhapsody, so these icons here, 
are just a square image and it needs to be called icon.png. And that just goes in your project's images folder. So this is just the default template one. So you can replace this. I've made them 500 by 500. The size doesn't matter too much, but you don't want it to be too small. Otherwise it'll be all pixely on larger screens. And it's just important that it's a square image and it's called icon.png. So the file name is important. And then there's also some fonts in here as well. So those are just used by the interface. If you want to use different fonts, you can feel free to use different fonts. Okay, so we've got our project. We've got some samples loaded. So we go to the settings menu over here and just make sure everything in here is how you want it. Version number, project name, bundle identifier, all that thing. And the important thing is the encryption key. So this is for the expansions encryption. So it must be set to one, two, three, four, because that's what Rhapsody is looking for. So expansions that don't have that key won't open in Rhapsody. Now, obviously, one, two, three, four isn't a very secure key, but it doesn't matter because Rhapsody is open source. So we're not going for that kind of security. OK, so I'm going to just come out of here and we're going to go to export and we're going to go down to export project. And we can already see it's set to Rhapsody Player Library. So just click OK. And it opens our project folder that's here on the left. And there is the LWZ file for our project. Now we also need to export the samples. So we go to export, export samples as archive. From the output format, select LWZ, Rhapsody samples, sample archive. And you don't really need to change anything here. You might want to support full dynamic range, but that's about it. And then we click OK. And it says the samples are exported. So now if we go back to our project folder, uh, we can see we have the data file. We should have samples. Oh, sorry, I missed a step. We have to compress the sample map first of all to CH files. So we just click this button here and click OK. There we go. So now the samples have been compressed. Now we can export the samples. OK, now we'll go to the project folder. And there we go. So now we've got the samples one as well. So if you have a lot of samples, you might have multiple samples, uh, LWZ files, but we only have three samples, so we just have one file. So these LWZ files, what's that about? So with the Safari browser and some other web browsers, I think Edge does this, uh, by default, when they download a zip file, they automatically extract it. And that's no good when you're trying to get users to install files in specific locations. So to get around that problem, I renamed my zip files LWZ, LibreWave zip. So these are just normal zip files that will open in any zip file viewer. But because I've got this different extension, it stops those browsers from automatically opening them. And it also stops users from poking around in them as well. So in here, we just have an info.hxi. So this is actually just the expansion we've created. And don't rename that. It's got to be called info.hxi for it to work. And then in this one, we have the samples. So in our case, it's just this tiny file. And that's all you need. So you send these to the user and the user can install them in Rhapsody. So let's do that now. So let's close highs. I'll just save that. And just tidy up here a bit. OK, we'll open Rhapsody. So the user will go to this plus button here, click manual install. They'll browse to the place they've got those two files. So in our case, it's just this folder on my desktop. Now the user has to select one of these files and it doesn't matter which one, as long as they're both in the same folder, Rhapsody will find the other one. And then they hit OK. Click OK here. Then they have to choose somewhere to install the samples. I'm just going to leave it set to my desktop here but I'll create a new folder on the desktop. I'll just leave it called untitled folder, that's fine. And then I'll hit install. And there we go, we can see the icon image. So that's the one we had in the images folder. And if we go to untitled folder, let's close that, we'll see that the samples have been placed in here. So that's it, really easy.
It's, it's just that export option from highs. There's no compiling involved. It's done. This will work on Windows, Mac, and Linux. And everything's code signed. Everything's notarized, even on Windows, which is a bit of a pain. Now, if we click on this, it will load our expansion. And there we go. So that's just what we saw in highs. There's the button to unload it, which will take us back to Rhapsody. Okay, I hope that was clear and straightforward. And if you have any questions, just ask. Um, you can find me on the Highs forum or the VR Control forum, or just send me an email or leave a comment below this video. I'll leave some links below the video where you can find Rhapsody and Highs and some more information. And if you want to keep up to date with all my Highs tutorial videos, please consider subscribing to the channel or checking out my Patreon page. Thank you very much for watching and enjoy the rest of your day.